recap our bye week and then uh, talk a little bit about Tennessee. Uh, so obviously this past week uh, for our players, you know, we had, had a couple different things we wanted to get done. We wanted to recharge mentally, uh, rehab physically, and then get a jump start on Tennessee. I think we did a good job with that. I uh, had an excellent two days of practice uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday before we cut the guys loose for the weekend. And uh, really the focus of that was, uh, you know, working on fundamentals and technique in all three phases for all the guys and really getting a bunch of uh, developmental work for, uh, for our younger players and our redshirt guys and kind of switching up the reps so the, the younger guys in the team periods at 7-on-7 seven has seven got a majority of the work. So uh, you know, I think we did a real nice job there with player development. From a staff standpoint, uh, we spent the whole day Monday uh, working on self-scouting all three phases, kind of doing a comprehensive review of everything that we've done and talking personnel. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we UT game plan in the morning and then practice prep and practice in the afternoon. And then uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, myself and the rest of the staff uh, hit the road recruiting. Uh, in that two-day span, we collectively hit 101 schools and uh, attended 20 games. And uh, myself personally, in the two days, went to 14 schools and went to four games, uh, one of those being a uh, Armstrong Middle School versus Columbus Middle School seventh grade game at Columbus High School. So I was able to double dip there, which was nice to get to see my son play, uh, the youngest one, and then get to the Starkville game to see my middle boy play uh, against Germantown. And then on Sunday, we uh, uh, began our, uh, had our first uh, Tennessee practice yesterday, and we were able to get a, get a jump start there. Uh, our student athletes of the week uh, were Nathaniel Buki Watson and Brevin Jones. Uh, from an injury standpoint, I think we come out of the bye week pretty healthy. Uh, the only guy right now that if we were to play a game that would be Unable to do so, uh, we'll be Colin Duncan with a lower body, but we are expecting him to get healed up um, some point this week uh, to get him ready and get him rolling. Uh, moving on to Tennessee, certainly it's the first time we'll face them in Knoxville since 2008, and the first time the two teams have met since 2012 here in Starkville. Uh, not a trip that our, that our fans make on a uh, frequent basis, uh, so excited to see a, a huge contingency of maroon and white and Bulldog faithful. Uh, at Neyland Stadium, and we have currently sold uh, 3,200 tickets for that game. Good seats still available, uh, but not many. So hopefully we're able to see, see a bunch more out there on whatever market they're able to locate the tickets. Uh, moving ahead to Tennessee, um, obviously coached by Jeremy Pruitt. Uh, 6 of 11 overall, Tennessee in the second year. 1-4 uh, and four overall, 0-2 in the SEC this year. But you look at the construct of the schedule, uh, you know, a one-touchdown loss to Georgia State in the opener, an overtime loss to BYU that was really kind of a crazy ending to that game, and then the Georgia game against the number three uh, ranked team in the country, I believe led 14-13 to 13 for a majority of the first half there. So don't necessarily think that the overall record is in indicative uh, you know, of their talent uh, and kind of their performance. I think they've been really close in three games and, and have done a nice job. You know, just kind of came out on the short end. Uh, a couple of games, you know, Coach Bruce is generally considered one of the top defensive minds in college football, five-time national champion, has coordinated the number one defense in the country three times in 2013, 2016, and 2017. And collectively, you look at his body of work, and I know he has a high-level involvement in, in, the, in, the, in the game plan and the calling of the game. Uh, his defenses have allowed less than 17 points per game since uh, 2013. Uh, offensively, the coordinator is Jim Chaney. Uh, has been around the block, a uh, very well-respected offensive mind at a bunch of different schools uh, around the country. Balanced attack, looking to run, the, looking to establish the run game first and uh, set up shots down the field. Averaging 24 a game, 353 yards, uh, fairly balanced, 138 rushing, 215 passing. Uh, not really knowing what quarterback uh, to see. Jarek Warantano, uh, 750 yards passing, seven touchdowns. I think he's the school's leader in a Completion percentage, you know, so, so, some done a real nice job as an older guy. Uh, obviously, last week saw Brian Maurer, uh, the freshman, uh, 303 total yards, two touchdowns, had 259 against Georgia and 209 in the first half. So very uh, young, talented, confident, uh, you know, guy who, who, who's not afraid to throw the ball down the field. Uh, the two running backs they use are Ty Chandler, number eight, out of Mont Montgomery Bell Academy. I uh, recruited him when I was at Penn State. Uh, weren't able to get that done. 320 yards, two touchdowns, excellent change of direction and vision. You know, kind of a slasher, you know, one cut, very fast guy. Then Eric Gray, uh, you know, local guy out of Memphis who runs hard. Uh, freshman that's been, been doing a real nice job for them there. And then the top receiver threat is Juan Jennings, 395 yards, five touchdowns, good size, strong, uh, reliable hands. 
an excellent playmaker. Uh, Derek Aisley is a defensive coordinator. He works with defensive backs, you know, base four down. Uh, they're able to get to some three down looks. Uh, you know, play with five DBs against teams who are, who are three or four wide receivers, and play some versions of uh, you know single high zone quarters and man to man. Allowed 28 a game, 209 passing, 167 rushing. Uh, Daryl Taylor, number 19, the defensive lineman, 19 tackles, two for loss, and a sack. Uh, 2018 team MVP. Uh, the linebacker Henry Toa Toa, uh, very 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 talented young uh, linebacker. You know runs very well, very physical. 32 tackles, two and a half for loss. And then Bryce Thompson at the defensive back position, 12 tackles, one PBU. Aggressive, physical. Uh, you know a guy who, who makes a lot of plays. Uh, very twitchy. Uh, Kevin Shears in his second season as a special teams coordinator. You know kind of uh, look to attack your weaknesses and schemes that change week to week. On kickoff, they're 93% touchbacks. On kickoff return, averaging 30 a game. And they'll have a block punt for a touchdown and 9 to 10 on field goals. Marquez Callaway uh, handles the punt returns. Ty Chandler, the kickoff returns. And Brent Simagalia, 9 to 10 on field goals with a long 51. Uh, so certainly excited to get back on the field and get ready to play another SEC game in a very challenging road environment. As I indicated to our guys yesterday, and throughout the week, uh, and, you know, preparation, physicality, and precision are the three things that we're uh, concentrating on to make sure that uh, we can go one to know this week and uh, you know, hopefully get back on the right track against a very, very talented and, and well coached SEC opponent. Any Thanks. questions? Start right here. Joe, is there anything challenging about facing a team that's going to be as desperate as a win as Tennessee is, especially considering, you know, how rotten their life has kind of been, as you said? Like, yeah. Times? I, I wouldn't. I mean, every game is a must-win for everybody. You know what I mean. So I, I don't think that that how they played this year, or what their record is, or coming off of a tough loss, or having suffered some you know close setback, is going to uh, kind of crank up their urgency. You know, I, I think in this league, you know, the margin of error is small regardless of the opponent. So I think it's going to be challenging because it's our next game. It's on the road in a uh, you know tough environment against a good football team. With Tommy being healthy, is there a decision to be made there, or is, or is he the starting quarterback going forward? You know, b both Tommy and Garrett are a little bit nicked up right now. You know what I mean? And they're they're not included on the, on the injury list because they're not out. But uh, you know, both of them are working through some lower body things. So uh, you know, they both practiced fully yesterday. Uh, you know, today's an off day. They'll be able to come in and get some uh, you know rehab and treatment on their own. And we we kind of have a plan for what, what we. Uh, Expect to do with both of them healthy, and continue to grind through the week, and uh, you know work the plan and see where we're at on Friday. With Kareem Walker eligible and all that, what does he add to the running back group, and how how nice has that been just to have an extra back and guy you can hand the ball off to? Yeah, he um you know he adds obviously experience, you know being at uh, Michigan and then JUCO and then coming in, uh, you know very talented, you know for Kareem's situation is I uh, probably uh, failed to update accurately. Uh, he, he will be an academic redshirt this year, so he'll be eligible to practice not to play. He will be eligible to play next year. So uh, he's going to work and do a lot of things uh, from a scout team perspective, kind of provide some of that you know older player leadership. But uh, he will not be able to play for us in games this year. Bye weeks can always be kind of a tricky thing. How do you feel like the team bounced back after having a weekend at home? No, they were they were great. Like I said, the uh, the uh, two practices on Tuesday and Wednesday were incredibly spirited, a lot of energy, a lot of urgency, and uh, you know I think the older guys like it to see the young guys get all those reps and kind of bang around and have some fun in there. So, yeah, you know once we uh, you know put the game to bed on Sunday, you know the previous Sunday, you know we moved forward, and had two good practices, and I think the kids are excited to uh, you know get back into game preparation. about that plan? Is it sort of a wait and see on Saturday type of thing, or do you have a starter in mind right now? We have a starter in mind right now. And that doesn't uh, preclude both from playing either in separate series or both <coughs> playing at the same time either. So we have a plan uh, for one to start, one to play, and then possibly two play at the same time. So cover all the bases. Coach, obviously, in this business, you're going to have assistants that, that run into 
schools that they they've coached at before. Yep. Um, obviously, Bob Shute came from Tennessee, and uh, just your thoughts on him going back and, and what he might can be able to help. I uh, know it's been a while; most of those players are gone, but uh, along those lines too, what was it about Shute that, that attracted you from the beginning, along with the, the fact that you guys worked together? Yeah, I, I don't think you can ever completely, uh, you know. Uh, Ignore the emotional component of, a, of coaching or playing in a football game against a, a, a institution where you where you've been before. But but I think Bob's a consummate professional, and any feelings that he may have, good, bad, or otherwise, you know, regarding Tennessee and his time there, and he'll be able to you know put aside and you know uh, you know his, his concentration along with the defensive staff will be to put a great game plan together and make sure we're putting the kids to be in position to be successful. You know, obviously, with his son being on the team, so you know more than anything, if it, you know he, he has uh, awareness and knowledge of, of their personnel and you know the guys on the team who he, who would, he would have been around, and you know just I said Bob grew up in a town probably 10, 15 minutes away from me, so you know known about him uh, from a coaching standpoint for a long time, and his defenses have been you know very highly ranked uh, for, in terms of scoring defense and. You know, total yardage for a very long time, and you know, I'd say his intelligence, uh, the way he motivates players, uh, and, and quite frankly, his production or, or what you know led him to me in the first place. And obviously, in this business, it's you know, I don't think most people make a habit of you know hiring people that they don't know in some capacity, or people that they don't people that they know have worked with in some capacity. So Bob kind of checked off all those boxes. Kind of circular logic. I don't know Sense. Did it? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> you mentioned all the recruiting stops that y'all made last week. Just uh, what was the reception like? What type of feedback did you get back from the recruits? We're not on top of the recruits, but from, from the coaches gotcha. uh, and, and the people in school, uh, it, it, was, it was fantastic. So they're, uh, you know, I think we've really, uh, in the past two years, demonstrated how committed we are to, to recruiting the state of Mississippi and, and the surrounding states in our footprint and have the willingness and ability to go nationally for a player that. It has a reason to come to Mississippi State, but you know the players. When we talk to them, you know, either on the phone or via text, and the coaches and the people we see in school, you know, love the direction uh, you know that we're heading. They're excited about Mississippi State football, and like I said with Colin, and you know, talk about some of the other guys. You know, there's something special to a, a young man and his family making the decision to stay home and play for their state university. So, coaches and, and, and the kids that we you know we talk to during the week, you know, they're uh, you know they could be more fired up about what we're doing and where we're heading. Steve and Tyler. Coach, along the, the recruiting aspect of things, you know, when, when you got here, there were some things already in place, but how, how do you kind of sell Mississippi State? What is kind of your your pitch on the, maybe the academic as well as the athletic side of you? Yeah. Um, you know, time probably prohibits kind of going into it incredibly in depth, but, but, but I think in general, you know, when, when you're talking to a recruit and their families, that uh, you want them to understand that in the four to five years or, or less if it's a junior college player that they spend at Mississippi State, that it, it's our goal and uh, our objective to make sure they leave a better person, a better student, a better player in that order. And that you're committed to much as their, as their uh, personal development, their academic welfare as you are to them as a player. And that uh, you know, any player who decides to come to Mississippi State can achieve all their, all their goals and all their dreams and aspirations on the classroom and in the field. Uh, and you see that by the you know guys that we graduate, the jobs that they get that are not football related, and certainly the number of kids that, that leave here and are, are uh, able to achieve their dream of playing playing in the NFL. When a game goes the way it did against Auburn, obviously fans, media, national and local are going to yeah. start saying things. Mm -hmm. How much of that do you hear, and, and did, does that add any pressure to the next game or, or even the season as a whole? Mm -hmm. Criticism relative to the Auburn game. Yeah, specific. Yeah, I, I think you know. Quite frankly, I mean, when you take this job, I don't know if we've had this discussion before. That you know, praise and criticism are probably you know something you need to be prepared for when something happens good or when something happens happens bad. And you know, you know, the, 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 if if there was, and I'm sure there was, that the criticism of our performance in the Auburn game was, was warranted, and, and I accept that, and I point the finger at myself, and you know, we need needed to perform better against a quality opponent. But uh, they're, uh, from an overall standpoint, I mean, you know, there, there's always going to be a certain 
uh, faction or segment of a fan base for any team in the country that's a vocal minority, and nothing you do is going to be good enough. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a simmering cauldron of, uh, you know, unrealistic criticism and, uh, you know, revisionist history, and, and, and that is what it is. And, and I'm not going to, you know, focus my time or attentions or efforts on Bob from Bogachita's opinion of the team, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to do what I do to get the kids ready and, and understand that, that our administration, our players, and, and the coaching staff are excited about the direction we're going. And if there's criticism that's warranted, that's fine. But I, uh, you know, I look, you address, you address it specifically and you talk about the right now and that you're going to continue to improve and get better. You know, that's part of it. And then, well, it's, there's not enough emotion. You know, what are we doing to make it better? And you look back in the past 17 years and we've had, after five games, have been better than three and, a, three and two, two times. Uh, and then when you talk about building and, you know, not going back to the past, well, then we'll, don't worry about the past, concentrate on now. So it's, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. But like I said, you can't really worry about that stuff. You, you're confident in the plan and, you know, just keep doing what we're doing and know that, uh, you know, the majority of the fan base and the people we encounter and media and, uh, you know, administrators across the country and peers in the coaching industry and people are, are incredibly excited about what we're doing. But that's a very good question. Well, Schrader having a few games under his belt now. I remember the first game he came in, you said you guys had to kind of shrink the playbook a little bit yeah. just to go with what he's comfortable with. Uh, from a tempo standpoint, is he to the point where you feel more comfortable with more up tempo with him, or is that just a, a progress that steadily changes for week to week? The pace at which we play is really dictated kind of by what we see, you know, this how fast or how slow we need to play. But I think what, what you're seeing is a higher comfort level uh, with the overall scope of the playbook with him. I would say it's opening up more, but his, his comfort level with some of the things that we're calling and his, his ability to see it and execute, I think, is improving on a weekly basis. Yeah. Just with the way a game like Auburn goes, I mean, you talk about flushing a game, just how much does it help having a week off and kind of away and for guys to get away to just sort of refocus and get back to things and sort of just put it behind them? I think attitude reflects leadership, so it could go one of two ways. You can either uh, dwell on it and, and allow the same game to try to beat you twice, or you can you know, correct it, put it to bed, and move on. And you know, we chose a ladder, so I think the kids will, uh, their actions will, will be dictated by what we focus on. And our focus was to correct it, understand that it wasn't acceptable, and we needed to, to do better in that game, and then uh, move on to Tennessee. So it, it depends. If, if you allow it to fester, it's going to fester. If, if you kind of put it to bed, it'll be put to bed. And we chose that. Coach, again, if you've already answered this in past weeks, but how late in the week of game week do you determine who will play, who will not play in terms of suspensions? Um, beginning of the week. And there's, it goes a little bit deeper into that, but beginning of the week. how much you can yes. say I'll, about I'll this. let Bill decide that. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, did you have a, like a relative plan in place of when guys might play or is it all rolling you know week to week? Uh, uh, <laughs> no I mean for me to kind of explain what it was would probably not be I'll, I'll let you and Bill handle that all. Okay. 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 <laughs> Similar question. When you have a situation like this where th there are things that are kind of beyond your control, how frustrating is it as a coach, you know, week to week to have to game plan around something like that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's less than ideal, I'll put it that way. Uh, when there's a certain number of guys and, you know, the talent level of some of the guys that you'd, you'd like to, you know, but it's like anything. There's reasons, there ex there's reasons and excuses. And uh, I, I don't, you know, if you look hard enough, you know, you can find find an excuse. But 
you know, we, we don't want our kids to, to kind of delve into that mindset and that mentality. And it happened. It's unfortunate. You know, we're, we're, there's choices and consequences, but, you know, we're doing our damnedest as a coaching staff to make sure that it's not a distraction and, and the guys that are available on a given week, we're in a fight like hell to get them ready and do well prepared and, and then take the field with who's available and you know, do our best to be one and all on a weekly basis. But it's it, short, it's incredible, it's incredibly challenging, yes. All right, thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Y'all have a great day and hail state.